About four years ago, Wayne Morgan, who is an excellent photographer, and I uh, decided that we would try to produce a book about the swamp because I've had some experiences in here that might be worth sharing. And, and he's such a great photographer uh, that we thought we'd probably try to publish a book. And so uh, ultimately we did. Uh, and I'd like to share with you some of the things in here that, that I really like and that I like the most. Uh, one of the, the first ones is a scene of a swamp trail. This is the trail leading up to Big Water, uh, Minnie's Lake, uh, and, uh, and, uh, and, and, um, oh, and, the, and the fork that goes over to Floyd's Island. So this is a, a picture of the trail, and there are 125 miles of boat trails like this in the swamp. Some of them are just for canoes. Uh, others are for either motor or uh, canoe. Um, but this is the kind of beautiful scenes you see. Huge cypress trees, uh, lovely water lilies, um, and red root. <laughs> inside inside this, uh, the swamp, there are uh, like 123 miles of boat trails and canoe trails. Most of it is for uh, uh, canoes, uh, and it's very beautiful in there. This is one of my favorite scenes here. This is made from the edge of Billy's Lake, looking into the forest. And in the forest, you see huge cypress trees. Cypress are known for their knees. Cypress make big knees. Uh, we have recent investigations have shown us that those knees are functional part of the respiratory system of the tree. That those knees actually serve as what we call a pneumatophore, a pneumatophore. It is a breathing apparatus that supplies oxygen to the root system. <clears throat> uh, on, on this page, of our book, we, we decided to put in a sunset. It could just as easily be a sunrise, but sunsets sometimes are better. Uh, and this, the reason for this is that the, the long waves of reds and oranges and yellows, those are the long ones that come through all the clouds, all the dust and pollens and everything that's in the atmosphere. The short wave, the blues, and the greens, and the grays, all of those are, are interfered with because they have such short wavelengths. And the shorter wavelengths do not come through. So that leaves the yellow and the orange and the red, red waves. That's why we have red sunsets uh, and sunrises for the same reason. Uh, what a beautiful scene this is. I've been working here in the swamp for a little over 50 years now. And in that time, I've, I've brought lots and lots of school children, I, probably as many as 10,000 kids a year over that long period of time. Um, and in doing so, there's two things that most visitors want to see in the swamp. One is an alligator and another is a boat ride. <laughs> and on their boat ride, they go by this very reflective black water. And there's a sign around here on a tree that is written upside down and backwards. And of course the reflection is right off of the water. Uh, we came by there one day and, uh, and I asked, can anybody read the sign on the tree? One little boy said, I can, it says Mirror Lake. I said, how did he do that? The teacher said, he's dyslectic. He has, he has a problem <laughs> that other people don't have <laughs> and he can read those things. So anyhow, 
This is a perfect example of the reflective qualities of the black water. Uh, and so you get, to, you get to enjoy the swamp twice. If you look carefully, you'll see another image down below it. In uh, late January or early February, this is what you'll see coming out of the water. Out of the, the, from underneath the surface, these yellow spikes begin to grow very rapidly and they grow in uniform. Uh, all of them at once at about the same rate with a golden top, a white collar underneath, and underwater it turns red. There you see some red down here on this one uh, and, and on several others. So it's a very colorful plant. The name of it is Bonnet, I mean, uh, the name of it is Never Wet. Never Wet. It is a, uh, an aquatic plant rooted in the bottom uh, and it, uh, its leaves are very resistant to the upper surface of to water. Water will not stay on it. It will not not show any moisture at all on the surface of the, of the upper leaves. Here you see the green leaves are just now coming out of the water. Here's one. Here's one. Here's one. As they come out, they may reach two or three feet long. And the upper surface of that leaf, if you look at it with a hand lens or a, no, of the microscope, you see teeny tiny little spheres, spheres. They're rounded knots on the surface. They're so close together that it doesn't even break the, the hydrogen bonds that hold water together. That's what forms surface film on water is a, is a bonding of hydrogen atoms one with the other. Um, so, and so when water falls on those, on that surface, it does not stay, go down into that groove between the two little tiny bumps, but it rolls from one to the other, to the other, to the other, and gave rise to the, to the fabric that t we today call Gore-Tex. Gore-Tex is a kind of a waterproof fabric that has that same molecular structure in the, in the threads that's woven into it. Consequently, it makes a good waterproof jacket. Um, and as, as this flower matures, it probably self-pollinates. I'm not sure about that, but it, it, they're, they're so close together they could cross-pollinate. But they, in doing so, they fertilize the little tiny flowers. And here's the flowers right on top. These little rough surfaces here on the, on the top, they, those are the flowers. So it pollinates, and, and there may be 30 or 40 little flowers that are pollinated on one, on one stem. Those then mature into a bunch of grapes. It looks like a small bunch of grapes. They're, they're about, about that big, about as big as the end of your small finger. Um, and and when, they, when they mature, they, fall, they get heavy and fall over on the water and, and those, lead, those seeds uh, become floaters and they float away and wherever they sink, they become a new colony or the new plant. So that's how, they, how it reproduces. Aerialist of the swamp and most any body of moving water in, in, in the south here will have these organisms hovering, zooming, doing dados uh, all over the surface of the water. And what they're actually doing is feeding uh, at the surface of the water, tiny little organism called midge flies, midge flies. They hatch, come to the surface, and break through the surface, and guess who's waiting? When they come through the surface of the water, dragonflies right there, and zoom. They zoom in very quickly, 
consume the midge fly or whenever, whatever small insect it might be, even mosquitoes. And I, and, and I have even seen one dragonfly eat another dragonfly. <laughs> they, they're so carnivorous that they don't pay any attention to who they're eating. It's just something to eat. Uh, and they are excellent flyers. This, this spider, uh, the spider here on this page is a golden silk spider. This is a female, a female spider. She's on this, this side of the web and she always ha hangs on the web with her head down. There's her head down here. So she always hangs head down on the web. Uh, here's a male. This is the male golden silk spider. And he's on the other side of the web. Uh, and, and he has to stay there until he feels like, and she gives him the signal, yeah, I'm ready. You can come over now. <laughs> uh, so he, he'll wiggle around and, and come around to the other side of the net and mate with her and he has to hustle on to get back because <laughs> she'll eat him. <laughs> if, she, if, she's, if he's not careful, he'll end up as being a snack for her. Uh, this is a beautiful spider. She's got a great lifestyle to, to listen to or read about. And over here is a fishing spider. This is a fishing spider. This, this spider here actually is on the side of a tree on the, hanging on the bark with a little algae and a little moss growing here. But notice there's one foot, maybe two feet. This, this foot is out there in the water. This foot is out in the water doing this. And when anything comes up to see what's disturbing the water, any minnow, tadpole, whatever, then it's pow! Gotcha. So he actually does disturb the water just enough to get the interest of a fish. And when he comes to the surface, he will actually catch the animal and eat him. The swamp has approximately 315 birds that are seen here at some time during the year. And this is one of them. He's a migratory bird. His name is Prothonotary Warbler. Prothonotary. Uh, it typically builds its nest either over the water on a limb or, or on, the, on the water and on a stump or a snag or a log. Uh, and she always has this beautiful golden hood over her head and she sings the most beautiful song early in the morning when you wake up on the, in your tent and you hear that sweet tweet, 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 tweet. That's the, that's the, the prothonotary warbler. He, she is a beautiful bird. And typically beside or even on a stump out in the water, she'll build her nest there. One of our many songbirds who uh, we, we're very proud to say makes part of their home here. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the front of our book, and um, it is a, a, a perfect example of the views of the swamp. One of the ones I like the best is what's on the back. This is a, this is a, 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 a photograph made on the edge of Billy's Lake in the, in the southern part of the swamp. The largest lake in the swamp is Billy's Lake and it contains about 60 acres and it's just full of alligators and, and, and beautiful scenery such as the one you see here. And I particularly like this because it shows this big abutment, this, this swollen base to a cypress tree is called an abutment. That, that gives it a wide stance of foot space to put down on this soft trembling earth in order to balance itself and to, to anchor itself in this soft earth. Uh, the sky here above us sees some contrails of modern civilization. A few little planes went by a while ago and left their footprints, uh, but that becomes a part of the clouds eventually. 
Um, I, I hope you'll find time and, 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 and are interested in, in seeing a picture of Okefenokee in the book.